Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, April 26th, and it is a very rainy day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Yesterday was beautiful, 60 degrees, sunshine, not so much today. Got my uh, rather old, trusty cob here, filled with uh, Cornell and Deal Bayou Morning, and Enjoying that with some 8 o'clock coffee. Oh, I'm making this video a bit later than usual because I've been really busy this morning. I uh, have been working on these guys. So these are Obviously, for corn cob pipes, camouflage stems. And I currently have, I'll show you the whole collection here. I currently have four of them. Um, oops, one's upside down. These are not finished, they're, uh, they're ready for final sanding. Still some scratches in there. I buff them up uh, just so that I can see the scratches better. Then I go back and start sanding at 220, go all the way up to 800. Uh, with acrylic, I will sometimes then uh, uh, buff them again with Tripoli and then do micro mesh pads and then do the white diamond, and that makes them really, really very glossy. So, um, I thought these would be a neat idea, you know, hunting season and all that. Uh, plus, they're just kind of cool. So, I showed these in a video when they were just uh, rough blanks, and uh, <laughs> believe it or not, Three of them are already spoken for, so there's one remaining if anyone's interested, and I am going to be making another batch of four. And I'll be, the information will be on my website and on Instagram. Uh, they typically are made to accept a filter. If you get in touch with me before I make them, I can make them non-filter. It doesn't matter much on a cob. And they can be straight or bent. Uh, your choice. Uh, I can I can bend them. And they all will fit standard into a Missouri Meerschaum uh, country gentleman size corn cob pipe. So any Missouri Meerschaum that takes the 6 mil filter will take one of these stems. And I noticed something interesting. So I've got a couple of uh, unsmoked country gentlemen that I use for taking photos. And I pulled this one out first and put the stem on it. And I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, but it is not centered. Um, it's hanging off on this side, so the stem is like shifted in this direction. And I couldn't figure that out. Um, so I thought, gee, I must have made this one off center. So I tried another one. And the same thing happened. Maybe not as obvious to you as it is to me right now, but when I put it on the other cob, the alignment is just perfect. There's no no overhang. Turns out, calipers here? Yeah. Turns out if I measure, I don't know if I can do this so that you can see it, but, well, I'll do it so I can see it and then I'll turn it around. So if I measure this side of the, um, the, the, the mortise wall, I get uh, just about 100 thousandths. If I measure the opposite side of the mortise wall, I get something closer to 120, 115, 120 thousand. So this cob is actually drilled off center. If I do the same thing on this one, I get the same measurement on both. So I knew always there was variability in these, but I've never seen one that was actually off center like that. And just a warning, if you get a replacement stem, for me or for anyone and it doesn't seem to line up right it may not be the stem it might be your your corn gob i was glad because that would mean i had a major error somewhere in my lathe work and that it was consistent with all four stems uh, it was just a off-center gob so anyway hope you enjoyed those um i think they're pretty cool Again, if you're interested, um, 
I'll have a post up on my website probably in the, in the for sale section probably in the next hour or two. And uh, you can follow me on Instagram, Kane Rod Piper, and you'll see when I have these available. Again, three of these are already spoken for, so there'll be another batch that I hope to finish up by this time next week. So, I'm enjoying this, uh, this Cornell and Deal Blend. I know many of you are familiar with Bayou Morning. Come on. It's a it's a it's a wonderful blend. If you like Perique, it's, it's a wonderful blend. And I was thinking about Cornell and Deal because they just put out a new series. So they, there was this um, that's right here. This Carolina Red Cake with Perique that I've talked about multiple times. Um, that's sold out now, and they just came out with a new series, Warped or something like that. That I and I haven't really paid much attention to new C and D blends. I, I, I grabbed that one. And I got some of their um, dark flake anniversary blend for uh, for smoking pipes because I like Perique and this has this 18 year old Perique in it and I wanted to, to try that and I wanted to sell her some of it. But for the most part, <clears throat> I, I'm happy with Haunted Bookshop, Old Joe Krantz, Bayou Morning, uh, Pegasus, uh, there's a couple others. I like Star of the East occasionally, uh, nice mild Latakia blend. Uh, Constellation is also one that, that is quite good, um, as a mild lot of care. I'm sure there's a couple others that I'm, I'm not thinking of right now, but, you know, th there's a ton of sort of underrepresented Cornell and Deal blends that uh, I've never tried, and, oh, Shandy Gap's another one. Yeah, I've never tried, and... Maybe they're fantastic, maybe they're not, I don't know. I haven't had many C and D blends that I haven't liked. But I thought it would be fun to almost randomly get some of these blends and I I didn't just randomly purchase them, but I you know, put some thought into what I like and how these might fit my my palette and all. But I thought it might be fun to kind of smoke through three Relatively unknown, uh, I, I think. Maybe, maybe you're all going to say, oh, I love that blend. But <laughs> I don't think so. So relatively unknown Cornell and Deal blends. And I got three of them. And I'm going to be doing this um, starting with this guy here, I think. Yeah. So this, you're not going to be able to read this. This is Bradyville. So the three blends that I picked out are Bradyville. Shelbyton and Yorktown, and I'll put those down down in the description so you can you can see them. Um, Yorktown is a basically a straight Virginia untopped. Uh, I like uh, blends like um, I cannot think of the name of it right now. The GLP's blend that's straight Virginia, uh, Union Square, I love that blend. And I'm hoping to maybe find something in bulk that's reminiscent of that, um, but I have not. Uh, and and it, to me, it's I'm very, very particular about Virginias, so I don't like a lot of bright Virginia, I don't like the tangy, I like the, the deep sweetness. Uh, this blend is probably not going to fit that profile, it's got a lot of bright Virginia in it. But anyway, I thought it'd be fun to do a straight Virginia. And then these two are Burley-based aromatics, but they're light aromatics from, from what I've read, uh, both Shelbyton and Bradyville. So I'm not going to talk about them a lot, but what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to start with Bradyville, and I'm going to smoke it over the next two weeks because uh, I want to allow a little bit of time here. I'll put a post up about Bradyville on my, uh, my home page, so if you go to the community tab, in the uh, uh, YouTube channel, my YouTube channel, the community tab, you can see the posts that I've made. And I'll put a post up that, uh, you know, says I'm smoking this for the next two weeks and I'll give you my impressions of it next, not next Sunday, but the following Sunday. Uh, and maybe you want to pick up an ounce and, and smoke along and you can put your impressions in that 
in that the comments to that post, or you can wait until the video and we can we can chat about it uh, in the comments. But I thought it'd be fun just to pick these three relatively unknown blends, uh, at least to me, and give them a shot. So. And I'm doing two weeks in case anybody wants to order an ounce and, and smoke along, uh, which I think would be really fun. Um, you know, we could we could compare notes on it. So Bradyville is up first, uh, <clears throat> and I'm I'm having flashbacks to uh, being a young boy who loved nothing more than coming home after school and watching Gilligan's Island. And having a sister who was extremely interested in watching The Brady Bunch. And it was on at the same time. And I hated that show. I hated that show so much. I still hate it. So when I think Bradyville, I'm getting these flashbacks of very boring afternoons. I was one of these kids that did the homework that I got in the last class during the next class. So that by the time I got home, I had very little homework to do. And, uh, yeah, I would watch TV or read, and there wasn't a lot of TV that I liked, but I was a big Gilligan's Island fan. In fact, I, I say this somewhat jokingly, but it's actually true. The, the character of the professor on Gilligan's Island is one of the reasons I went into science. <laughs> I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's actually true. I mean, it was that and the character of the scientist that runs through a lot of, like, 1930s up to 1950s uh, sci-fi horror, uh, where you always have the the scientist working in a, in a basement lab or something like that, and he's the person that they turn to when the stuff hits the fan. Uh, it, it just was intriguing. Of course, that's not at all what science is like. I don't know if it was ever like that. I also happen to really enjoy answering questions and working out puzzles, so it all turned out fine. So we're actually going into week six of this uh, this quarantine thing, or shelter in place, or whatever they're calling it. Uh, it's hard to believe I haven't been to work in six weeks. Who'd have thought this time last year? You know, it's just, it's just remarkable. I love the Perique in this, uh, this Bayou Morning. Well, I've got to get these guys looking glossy and ready to go. I've got uh, a couple of other pipes on the bench that I'm working on. One that I'm doing a video on. And tomorrow you'll get part three of the uh, bamboo shank pipe uh, re-stumbling video. I hope you're, you're following that. This coming Friday, we've got Pipes and Bees joining us for uh, Kane Rod Pipes Live, and I'm really looking forward to that. He's a, he's a great guy, and uh, I think it's going to be a real interesting conversation. And I'll probably do something on Wednesday. Uh, I've, I've been enjoying those Wednesday rambles. They're not, uh, not what they used to be when I was driving around, I know, but they still give me a little bit of... Uh, psychological help <laughs> anyway folks i hope you've all had a great weekend enjoy the rest of your sunday and have a great week ahead and until we speak again i will look forward to talking to you all again very soon goodbye now just sit right back and you'll hear a tale a tale of a fateful trip that started from this tropic port aboard this tiny ship the mate was a mighty sailing man, the skipper brave and sure. Five passengers set sail that day for a three-hour tour, a three-hour tour. The weather started getting rough, the tiny ship was tossed. 
If not for the courage of the fearless crew, the minnow would be lost. The minnow would be lost. The ship's aground on the shore of this uncharted desert isle. With Gilligan, the skipper too. A millionaire and his wife. The movie star, the professor and Mary Ann. Here on Gilligan's Island.